What's going on team? It's Nick and Kelly from the Karate Playbook. Guess what day it is! We are calling it Kuma Tuesday. Mic drop! <laughs> so we're going over some different ways that you can train Kumite, but with that we're going to give you 10, that's just 5, we're going to give you 10 drills or ways you could practice Kumite plus a bonus, bonus that is extremely difficult but really fun if you're trying it out. All right, so like we mentioned, we're going over 10 ways that you can kind of change up your kumite, add some versatility into it. They're gonna be, a lot of them are self-explanatory, but the first one is just one hand. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we were set up, I might choose to actually bring this hand behind my back. I may choose that I could block with both, but I could only attack with one hand or the other. You can change this up by doing just half of your body also, so you can say, you know, maybe just your left or your right, mm -hmm. and uh, and kind of mess around with it that way. Numero dos! You can't see my fingers, that's two. Hey, this two gloves! Two gloves. <laughs> so this one is no kicks or no punches. Don't do no kicks or no punches, because then you're just standing there and it's not fighting. Kind of mix it up, you could do either, I know that sometimes we'll do just hands, so both people are only throwing hands, Sometimes we'll do both just throwing feet. What I found with some for some of our students is if I had Sensei Nick, he could only throw hands, but then I could only throw feet. That was very fun to watch for both people. All right, so number three is just some fun. Uh, it's less about limiting your techniques. It's more about just making it kind of crazy. So this one is that you're going to add spin. <laughs> a, a spin, or we also will sometimes do burpees after each exchange. So mm -hmm. if we were sparring, and, and we throw an exchange, you can have either one person maybe have to do the spin, or what I actually like to do is the person who gets the point has to do the workout or the spin. So if it's me sparring against an underbelt, and I keep scoring, but I then keep having to do burpees or spinning around, it's gonna make me really dizzy or really tired, and it's gonna kind of even the playing ground a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna really bring you next level, because you have to figure out where to get your bearings in order to get that next point. All right, number four is more of a strategy-based drill, and this one is starting in a certain position in the ring. So maybe uh, one of the ones that we'll do is maybe she would start in the corner or up against the wall, and she would have to defend herself in this, or find a way exactly like this to circle and get out. So she might not be limited by having to stay there, but she just has to start there and then find a way to circle out and, uh, and fight from that position. And it also lets you know where you prefer to be in the ring. So if you're a more dominant fighter, you might be towards the center. So maybe you wanna put yourself in a different position to get used to that, or just know what your positives and negatives are about your fighting style. Farting style. <laughs> Fighting style so that you have better knowledge for your skills and what you can do better or worse. Yeah, and that actually brings up a good point. If you guys want a video on how to control the ring, Ooh, that's, uh, a good that's one. one of the things I love doing. Uh, I don't think I've done a video on that yet, actually. Not. Uh, and so if you want it, toss it down in the comments. We'll work on it. We have a couple that we're going to be working on right now. But uh, yeah, if you want a video on how to control the ring from the side or from the center, and finding your fighting style, drop a comment because uh, that might be kind of fun to do. Sometimes I have ideas. All right, number five, this is one of our favorites or at least the ones that we use most commonly in here and that's attack versus counter. All right, so this one, if I was the attacker, she knows that I'm gonna be the person that moves first and I know that anytime I move, she's gonna try to counter somehow, right? Ugh. So it, uh, it actually adds somewhat of an advantage to both sides because if I'm the attacker, I don't have to worry if she's gonna attack me, right? So I, I don't have to worry about doing this side of things. I can just kind of try to figure it out and then throw my attack or she would throw her attack if she's the attacking side. All right, number six, this is another fun one and you can do it a couple different ways. So if we're in our stance, if I'm normally left side forward, this one is switching your stance. So the easy version would be just fighting right side forward. Mm -hmm. Now I know a lot of you fight on both sides. So the difficult way to do this is if we were sparring and I want to attack, I have to switch my stance just before I throw my attack. This makes it extremely difficult because you're telling them, hey, I'm coming at you. And then you have to use your strategy and kind of your different techniques to figure out where you want to attack. All right, so this one is extremely difficult, 
but it's really fun, something to, to kind of challenge both sides quite a bit. So if we were sparring, this one is doubling it up. So if we are going to throw any technique, if I want to throw a jab, I have to throw it twice. If I want to throw a reverse punch, I have to throw it twice. If I want to throw jab reverse punch, I have to throw it twice, all right? So if I'm throwing this one, two, even if my first one lands, I have to throw a second one of the exact same thing. Now you can see how this would be very difficult. So if I go one, two, and back, she knows that I'm doing that one again. So I have to try to figure out a way to maybe still land it, but with her knowing when I'm going and what I'm doing. So this one's great for strategy. All right, we're on to number eight. So this one is more for kind of applying kata to kumite, Ooh, but it's fun. a great challenge. Yeah, That's so my favorite. Uh, especially for those people that love kata or just love a big challenge in kumite. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can say that no matter what technique you're throwing, you have to be in a traditional uh, technique. So if I want to do a punch to the body, maybe I have to do um, you know, shift forward and throw with like a big draw hand. Of course, that leaves me open for maybe her right hand or her left hand, whatever it may be. The other way that I actually love doing it is you give each person, this is great for black belts, give them a kata. So maybe one person has hei on shodan and one person has hei on nidan, right? So the only things that she can do is try to do techniques from hei on shodan. Right? And I would have to do techniques from hand knee on. This makes it extremely hard. So she might, yeah, she might try to swap my hand out of the way like a low block and then punch uh, where maybe if she's throwing something at me, maybe I have to block and go this way, kind of like this motion from knee on. So this one you can play around with, of course, and, uh, and feel it out, but it's really fun Absolutely. to do. Takes your kata and your kumite to the next level. All right, so number nine. This one is actually something I picked up from uh, Sensei Junior Lefebvre in uh, Belgium. Um, amazing karateka, amazing uh, WKF fighter. If you haven't seen him, you're missing out. Check him out. But uh, this is one that he had us doing when we were training there. If we're in our stance, we have to take our front hands and extend them all the way out, okay? So I have to leave it like this. We call this fencing kumite. So I'm gonna leave my arm out. I can't bend my arm. But my goal is I'm gonna punch with only this hand. So this is gonna work on my hip rotation and my ability to kind of knock her hand out of the way and then try to go in and touch. Okay, so I can touch and pull it back, but I have to go right back to this position here. Right, if she's throwing hers at me, I can try to block it and then go here but this one is a really difficult one but it's really kind of fun to play around with really try to move around and try to touch and, and go in this way she got lipstick on my glove um he did it <laughs> all right number 10 and remember there is a bonus one right after this that's an extra difficult challenge but number 10 is the only one we're going to use some equipment and i have one of these resistance loops this have the lightest the smallest one that we have and Version number one is that I'm going to put this around both of us like this. Whee! <laughs> and we're going to spar this way. So it kind of keeps us in close. We have to move around and throw our techniques and still try to keep this band uh, without falling or from pulling too much. So this is the first way. Now the second way is extra fun. You can do this with either two bands and a couple bags. Or if you have four people, you can have two people holding on to uh, each of the, so one person on each band. So if she were to face this way. My invisible opponent. Yeah, exactly. It'll be the wall. I would be holding on to this band and kind of adding some resistance as she goes into the other person. So this is a great way to work on your explosion. All right, so now that we're through the 10, we're gonna give you our very favorite bonus, the, bonus, bonus, bonus drill. And this one is, extremely difficult. This is great for advanced belts. This is what we call anime kumite. Anime kumite, because if you're watching any anime, they always call out whatever technique before they throw it. So 
The goal is that I have to call out the technique that I want to do just before I do it. So if we're set up in our stance here, if I want to throw a jab, I would have to say jab and then throw my technique. So she would of course know what technique I'm throwing, but I don't have to tell her what angle I'm coming at. All right, so again, if we're here and she wants to throw a jab, she could say jab, jab. and then she would have to find a way around my guard. Right, because I'm looking for it. If she says reverse punch, she has to call reverse punch, but she doesn't have to tell me what level she's going at. So if she says reverse punch, reverse punch. and I go like this, right, maybe she goes up to the head instead of to the body. This one is extremely hard, but extremely fun. So try them out, let us know what you think, let us know if there's any video that you'd like to see. But other than that, have an awesome time training all these. Yep. Have a great day. We will see you in the next one. Woo! Peace. Peace.